I oh, know, mate. I haven't, have I? I've got two tickets. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. You're lying. <laughs> So we're just about to go and meet Alex BD to talk a little bit about what he's doing at the moment, talk a little bit about uh, his fitness journey and his business journey after he was in Love Island. And then we're gonna meet up with our friend Abu, who is a men's open and junior bodybuilding champion. So we're gonna have a workout, talk a little bit about business. So yeah, stay tuned. Okay, so just had a workout over at Body Zone and we just had our breakfast there at the Naked Deli in Newcastle and we're just gonna catch up with the guys. Obviously we got Abu here, personal trainer, bodybuilder, killing it at the moment, um, talking to us a little bit about what he's doing. And then we also got Alex here, P ex PT, <laughs> uh, online coach, model, entrepreneur. Well, we you, yeah. you, you name <laughs> it. You, you, you name it. <laughs> you name it, he's done it. Um, so yeah, so first question is, um, so what advice would you have given yourself kind of two years ago when you came out of the villa? Yep. Business advice, what would you go back and tell yourself then? Um, I felt like I uh, rushed trying to teach people or trying to show people um, what I knew, what my past was, so obviously being involved with fitness and being a PT and whatnot. I really wanted to like build my career uh, in the fitness. And I've tried to push it too hard straight away. So my advice would be to myself would be to take it steady and implement um, what I knew and my tips and tricks and stuff to then further get people into what I'm teaching. Uh, like if a car salesman basically comes up to you and tries to sell you a car straight away, um, you're going to tell them to go away. It's going to fuck off. Same thing happens with anything you're trying to sell. I think you've got to really teach people that you know what you're talking about. Um, show them that you know what you're talking about so they can visually see it. Obviously everything is super visual these days. You go on Facebook, you go on Instagram, you go on any of these things. It's all video, 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 um, talking, trying to get a personality across. So instead of trying to bring out a product and just sell them a product straight away, my advice would be to um, really implement your uh, your traits and your profession before you even bring out a product, you know, so people can recognize you for, for, for it, you know? What do you think the best thing for you, picking up new clients is? How, how do you do it? You know, that's, um, like Alex said earlier on, you just got to make yourself present, really. You know, for instance, if you work at a gym, um, and for instance, you're just doing, you know, your basic hours. So if you're doing, let's say, if you're working at a gym, like a pure gym or the gym group, um, obviously they're required to do 12 hours. And um, during those time, you know, you've got to try engage with the members. You know, you've got to be, you've got to be proactive. You know, use the time wisely. Um, try to engage with the men because you can. You know what I mean? You know. You, you don't really need to speak to them about you know anything PT related. You know, just go over to them. If, it, you know, if you see them struggling and they need a bit of help, just go over to them. Give a quick you know tip on how they could better the movement or how you know how they can kind of focus on whatever you know area of the body that they're training well. So kind of like giving them free advice. Like from, building a relationship, aren't the thing, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, try yeah. To, you know, you try to interact with them, with the members, and um, from then they'd be like, oh well, this guy just he isn't just caring about. Business, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, he has, yeah, he has, he has, he has a passion, he has, he has a passion yeah. for what he does, you know? And from that, from just giving out free advice, you know, you could potentially get a client, you know, that's a potential client, you know what I mean? Yeah. You um, go from like, if there's like 10 PTs in a room and one of them comes up to you and gives you something for free, free you know, 100% yeah. you go to that person next time you want something think, free or... I think different. the common yeah. theme there is kind of, being willing to give away things in return for nothing in, in return for nothing back. So whether it's giving free advice and free tips to people on your Instagram, or whether it's going up to people and speaking to them, building that relationship, building that trust. I always use this analogy, and it, it, it's bang on, it's 100%. You'd never walk up to a girl in a bar and just say, Oh, do you fancy coming back to mine? It doesn't work like that, and that's the that's the sort of that's the sort of thing that I see people kind of do, personal trainers and people, and that's the equivalent of you come out with something and then you're like ramming things down yeah, people's yeah, throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah buy this stuff from me or you go up to someone and go, do you want to train with me? It's £250 for 10 hours. Yeah. Nobody wants that. They want to kind of be moved down a little bit, 
go up to them, you build a bit of a relationship, you build a bit of rapport, you get them buying into what you're doing, and you're more likely to then get a sale out of it in the end. But you can only do that if you're willing to give away things and expect nothing in return. Thanks so much for these guys for kind of coming in, sharing their expertise, sharing their knowledge. That's how you learn. It's from other people and what they've done and what they've been able to achieve. And they can kind of fast track you to where you want to be. So it's so important um, getting these guys in, uh, talking about stuff like that. Great workout as well. Probably going to feel sore tomorrow. So good day. Okay, so just seen there, we just caught up with Alex and Abu talking about um, fitness and business and also how to work out. We are going to make up my post-workout shake now and then head over to Sunderland where I've got a presentation in front of a new group of personal trainers talking them through some tips in sales and business in the fitness industry. But first of all, like I said, we've got my, my vegan vegan protein blend. So I usually do kind of a scoop and a half. I'm not mega, mega strict with this. Um, I do like a scoop and a half. I'm not mega strict with uh, this shake because I've kind of been making them for quite a while now. Um, so I kind of know what I'm doing to a certain extent. So what I'll do is I'll have a scoop and a half of the vegan protein blend. I've went for banana, uh, half an avocado, which I just cut in half and then squeeze in. I don't know if that's the most conventional way of doing it, but saves me the most time and then I usually go kind of just a handful of kale um, oh, always make a mess but I'll tidy it up after then I kind of go for some frozen fruit just because it makes the consistency a lot, a lot nicer um, and it means I don't have to put ice in so Usually I'll put kind of a hundred to, depending on what fruit it is, usually I do this with mango, I'll put kind of a hundred to 150 grams in, um, but I'm pretty all right at just eyeballing in it. I reckon that's about 100, 100 or so grams. I'll use a little bit of maple syrup, just a dash like that. I'll put a little bit of peanut butter in, probably no more than kind of 10 grams, but like I said, I probably, Maybe a tiny bit more, but you know, I'll be fine. Um, just kind of just eyeballing it and then finishing it off with oat milk. So it just about covers it. That's gonna be nice and creamy, really thick. Um, I feel like that fills me up a lot more rather than it being like quite watery. And um, the thicker I make it, the kind of the more it feels like more of a meal. So everyone knows that you've got to shake it up to get the powder out. Otherwise you just get powder stuck in the top. Put it in, Nutribullet. Many hours later. So that's done there. As you can see, it's quite thick, which I really like. Obviously, metal straw for the fishes. Also, I'm gonna take with me a carb crusher bar. I've got my vegan protein cookies here and my carb crushers. These are a bit lighter. We've already ate quite a bit of food today, so. With it being a Sunday, I'm not really tracking things um, that hard. I'm just eating what I usually would. Um, so I'm gonna take a carb crusher bar with me to fuel me up during this talk. And then we will head over to Sunderland now to speak to the learners. So what we, what we do is we kind of take this opportunity kind of mid course or um, as the course is ongoing, to come in and have a chat with you guys about what happens when you qualify and what happens when you get your kind of PT call and move into the world of PT essentially. So this is something that I've used and I've, I've been doing this for kind of years as, as, a, as a PT and as a fitness professional. So right at the top here, this is your audience. This is everybody who knows you. Now that could be through social media, that could be word of mouth, friends, family, whatever, you name it. This section of your audience here, this section here might be social. So this might be your social media. That might be Facebook, Instagram, whatever you decide to use. The rest of it is your whole audience. So everybody who, let me get another pen. Everybody who knows you, my pen also doesn't work. This pen, doesn't work. But 
back. So, what you've got, you've got your audience. Now, this is everybody who knows you, knows of you, knows who you are. Now, just because they're in your audience doesn't mean they're a potential client. For example, um, somebody might be in your audience, someone that knows you, but they might already be a personal trainer, or they might not be interested in fitness. It might be a 95-year-old granny who's just got no interest whatsoever. It might be someone who's just never gonna buy your services for whatever reason. They might already be a PT, they might already be into their fitness massively, not need any help. It might just not be suitable for them. So, underneath your audience, you've got your prospect. So, what you need to do is you need to take people from prospect down all the way down to here. This is your, your finances, you making money as a fitness professional. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the three steps to get you down there. So it's a funnel down and you'll see the reason why. Now within this, we've got three sections, okay? We're gonna call this one low, this one medium, and this one high. Now. Enjoy the course. When do you guys finish? Five weeks time. Five weeks time. End of, uh, end of the course. Was it, was it